you spent time today with uh, the family of, of one of the victims. Right, and they have so many questions still, Anderson, as you said, so much to learn. We spent some time with Lois Ogilvie's mom. Uh, her pain clearly still raw, but she did tell us that her daughter was a wonderful mother. Her children were always her top concern, even as she took her last breath. I'm sorry. Sandra James is mourning her daughter, Lois Oglesby, who was struck by a bullet and killed in the Dayton, Ohio shooting. Lois has a seven-year-old daughter, and had just given birth a couple of months ago to a baby girl. She was looking forward to a night out with her girlfriends. She said, well, Mommy, I'm, I can have fun too. And I said, yeah, you can have fun sometimes too, today. She said, I hadn't been out, so I'm going to go out. I'm going to have some drinks. I said, OK, be careful. And that was it. You told her to be careful. Be careful. I knew she was going to call me. I knew she was going to call me. Her mother says after Lois was shot, she called her boyfriend, who was watching the kids. How did you find out what happened? <laughs> we were asleep, and her, her boyfriend called, and he said, Mom, Nate, Lois FaceTimed him. He said she said she was grazed by a bullet, and she said, babe, come and get me. He said, no, you need to go to the hospital. She said, no, I need to get to my kids. And then that was it. So she was able to FaceTime? She FaceTimed him. Her boyfriend, after she had been shot? Yeah. She thought she was grazed. She said, I've been grazed by a bullet. Sandra and her daughter's boyfriend rushed to the scene, but Lois's injuries were more severe than she thought. She died before they arrived. I couldn't get to where she was. He got to where he could see her laying there with the cover on her. And he was angry because he wanted her off the ground. She was in the street. Yeah. Lois was just 27. This recent video shows Lois getting her baby girl to smile Hi, for the first time. <laughs> hey, mommy. I actually talked to the young lady who heard her say her last words, which was, somebody get my kids. And she said they weren't there three minutes. They didn't have any drinks. Before it happened. They didn't even get inside the bar. They were outside. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sandra says her daughter was a loving mom who loved not only her own children, but all children. This is Lois. Lois worked at a daycare center and had dreams of becoming a pediatric nurse. My daughter was beautiful inside and out and the love that she showed for kids, the compassion that she had for children. It was just amazing. During Lois's first pregnancy years ago, she'd been carrying twins. But when only one survived, she explained to her daughter, Hannah, that her twin sister had gone to heaven. Now this. So does Hannah now understand what's happened to her mom? Does she think she's gone to the same place? Yeah, but she says she wants her to come down. She knows she's in heaven, but she wants her to come down. It's like, and when it happened, every phone that rang from the people were here, she kept asking, is that my mommy? Somebody call my mommy. She wants someone to call her mommy. Anderson, imagine how hard it must be for a seven-year-old to make sense of all of this when we as adults can't even understand or comprehend what's happened here. But Sandra does say that she does plan to help raise her two granddaughters. She just hopes that she can be as loving to them as their own mother was. Anderson. I mean, I, I mean she's just an extraordinary in that she's able to, to talk in, in this, the, the darkest moment of her grief. And I, I just keep thinking that you know, in a few days or weeks, cameras are going to leave here and people are going to move on elsewhere. And, and she and everybody here has lost somebody. Their lives were forever changed. And they're going to be expected to go back to work and move on with their lives. And, and 
I mean, that, that's one of the saddest things of all, you know. Their lives are forever changed. 